Hi friends, welcome back. Today I want to share with you um, a little, I don't know what you call it, revelation or analogy um, that I felt like God brought to me as I was weeding and cleaning out my flower beds yesterday. Um, it just like hit me how the same way that, so when we pull weeds, um, like if we just pull off the top and don't get to the roots of it, it might like from the surface, it, we might not see those weeds for a couple days or a week or whatever it might be, but eventually those weeds will pop out again. And in the same way, it is with sin or bad habits or there might be something that we're struggling to overcome in our life. If we just try harder, we might be able to, to overcome that for a couple days or a week. Um, but we are human and so we are going to fail and that thing will pop up back up in our life just how the weed pops back up if we don't get to the root of it and if we if we get to the root of the weeds we pull out the root and everything it is not as likely to grow back again and in the same way it is with our life we have to get to the root of the sin or the bad habit or whatever it is in our life that we're trying to overcome. And we have to get let, like the weed itself can't pull itself out. Just like we on our own can't pull out or get rid of that bad habit or sin in our life. We have to have Jesus. He is the, the weeder in our life. Just like I was the one that was digging out the weeds by the roots. So Jesus does that in our life. If we, we can try harder, we can try to do better. And yes, we have to be disciplined, but I believe there's a huge difference in discipline and trying harder. If we just keep trying harder, keep trying harder and just pull off the top of that and don't get to the root of it, we are going to continue to fail and then we're going to fall into that cycle of shame and condemnation which is not from god if you are feeling shame condemnation for like something that you want to overcome that is from the enemy god convicts us of the thing in our life and he gives us a solution to overcome that and the if we live in shame if we live in condemnation we let the enemy put that on us we are just going to continue to go into that cycle of trying harder failing trying harder failing shame condemnation trying harder and it's just going to become a cycle of and we're just going to continue living in that because it just looks impossible to overcome. But when we can surrender that that sin or that bad habit, whatever we're trying to overcome, if we surrender that to God, we lay it at his feet and we ask him to weed it out of our lives, to dig it up by the roots and get rid of it, it will be so much easier to overcome. And he can completely set us free from that sin, from that deed that desire from that bad habit and yes we're going to have to use discipline to continue you know walking in freedom of that but um it was just like for example i really really struggled with anger um with raising my voice for so long like and it just really, it really, um, I didn't think about it as much until I had children. And I started responding to my children in 
in a snapping way, raising my voice at them. And I realized, like I would for years, I just tried so hard to overcome that. And every time, like I would be able to overcome it for a couple days. I would, you know, pull it out just at, on the surface where you, you wouldn't see it for a couple days, but then it would come back because I was trying to do it in my own strength. It wasn't until I completely surrendered that struggle of anger and raising my voice to God that I was able to find victory in it. And yes, there are times where my flesh gets the best of me and it comes like the anger rises to the surface, but I can now recognize it where I can, um, as soon as it happens, I can, um, instead of living, going into that condemnation and shame of just trying harder, I put my focus on Jesus and just stop and give it to him and ask him to, to help me overcome that and re-surrender it. And, um, yeah, there's just so much more victory found in surrender and surrendering it to God than trying harder and living in that condemnation and shame. Um, and I want to read a couple verses. Galatians 5 verses 16 through 26. I say then, walk by the Spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I warn, I am warning you about these things as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Jesus, to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So I want to go back and look at verse 16. It says, I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. So it says if we walk by the Spirit, we won't carry out the desire of the flesh. But what does it mean to walk by the Spirit? To walk by the Spirit means to live a life that depends on the Holy Spirit's power to grow in godliness, obey God's commands, and experience increasing intimacy with God. So walking by the Spirit, we we let go of that one of trying to control our lives or of just trying harder and we we surrender to the holy spirit and we live a life that depends on his power to help us overcome those things in our life and then if we go down to verse 25 it also mentions living by the spirit it says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. So, what does it mean to live by the Spirit? To live by the Spirit, we have to stop acting as if we are in control of our lives. We have to, to let ourselves be led by the Holy Spirit. We must obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. So, if we, those things that we are struggling with in life that we are trying to overcome instead of just continuing to try harder and think that we have to somehow be in control of it we need to surrender that control give it over to the holy spirit and let his power 
help us overcome those things. And we will have so much more victory over those things by doing that than trying to always just do it in our own strength, just always trying harder and living in that cycle of trying harder, um, overcoming it for maybe a couple days and then we fail again and then we walk in that condemnation and shame and it's just a never ending cycle. But if we can walk by the Spirit, if we live by the Spirit, we live a life that depends on His guidance, His power. And every time that we do, you know, we we fail because we're human, um, we can, instead of letting ourselves live in shame, we can repent and we can put our focus on God and who He is and Use it as an opportunity to draw closer to him, to focus our eyes more on him. Like, just for example, with me, um, you know, losing my patience or having that anger. Like, any time that I struggle with that or I find myself, um, you know, falling short, it's most times it's because I got so wrapped up in the busyness of my day or I got so wrapped up in, you know, trying to get things done and I took my focus off of what's most important. I took my focus off of letting the Holy Spirit lead me and I got caught up in the moment instead of pausing asking the Holy Spirit to help me, asking him to take over. And so I just encourage you, like if you, as you were listening to this, there might be something that came to mind of a certain thing that you're struggling with in life right now. And maybe you're in that, in that cycle right now of just trying harder and failing and then walking in condemnation and shame and then falling into it again and trying harder, I encourage you to just take this as your sign, if you want to say it, to just give it all to God, surrender it to him, say, I am giving this over to you. I'm giving over control to you. Help me to keep my focus on you instead of what I'm trying to overcome. And he can completely take away those desires. He can completely set us free from that thing that we're struggling with. If we continue to choose to keep our focus on him. And every time that we we do fall short, we, we see it as an opportunity to put our focus back on him. Instead of falling into that condemnation and shame that the devil wants us in. So... Thank you for watching. I hope this could be an encouragement and just know that I am here for you. I'm praying for you and yeah, I hope you have a blessed day.